There you are. Hey. Hello. Hi, guys. So nice to see you. How are you doing? Hey, Sky. Really good. Really, really, really happy that this conversation that's been going on for quite a while is now finally happening this week with you guys. So totally, totally. Really excited for that. I know that I've um, mentioned it to quite a few people who are kind of on my network. So in, in case they don't know you, if you're happy, I thought I'd just give a really quick sort of introduction. Um, sure. Hello to anyone who, who's just joined us, just looking at some names and things there. So this week, um, we're handing over the App Trailer Instagram account to Amit Arup. Um, because as, as many of you know, there's a big conversation happening at the moment about the lack of vain representation within our industry, within the creative sectors, really. So related to us, that's like photography and TV and production. Um, it seems that the message and the kind of advice about this option as a career needs to get out there to people of school age and university age. So we need to kind of reach younger people, people who are just starting out. So we thought, how can we do that? You know, we have our own networks, but you know, it's limited. So we've scoured the globe um, and we've selected five incredibly talented and exciting um, people from the Bain community who have entered or are entering the creative community. Um, most of whom are really interested in photography or already practicing photography. So. We thought we would hand over to them to ask questions to Amit Naru publicly, because that way, hopefully, some of the questions, some of the advice and the inspiration that you guys can offer can, can reach this, this wider network. And maybe we can get people considering or even reconsidering their career and, and, and maybe joining the photography network at large. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow out now and um, be awesome. quietly lurking in the background. Thank you so much again to both of you for giving up your time. I, I know this has been um, something you've been passionate about for ages. So I will hand over to our first interviewer, Samuel Garrett, um, MA State student of photojournalism and journalism, um, writes about food, writes about music, writes about black culture. So I'm really excited to hear some of the questions that Samuel has for you guys. Um, thanks so much again. Thanks, Guy. Thanks, Guy. Thank you so much. All right. Bye -bye. Hopefully I won't quit us all when I quit now. <laughs> I think I can close you from here as well. Okay. There we go. Okay. So Sam, I can see you here, man. Let me just go live with you now. It should be popping up. Hey, hey. guys. My hey, man. man, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good, thanks. How are you, Sam? Good, brother. Thank you for being part of this, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, this is our pleasure, man. Our pleasure. So, um, so let's get let's get into it, man. I know you got some some great questions to ask us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, we can we can help you as much as we can with the answers. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, yeah. So first off the bat, um, just wanted to know, like, you've you've talked in the past about like the support you've got from your family, mm. and um, and how you like you started out, um, and how you got into photography. But then, like, obviously, coming from, like, a um, migrant family myself kind of thing, it was the, the choice was all either be a doctor or a lawyer kind of thing. Um, it was You never really got the opportunity to kind of, like, pursue a career in the creative industry up until, like, it was just mainly just, like, a passion or a hobby, sorry. Um, but I just want to know what, what advice would you give to someone who doesn't really have that level of support from the beginning on how to get into the creative industry? You know... Sam, you're not alone there. We meet so many people who are in exactly the same situation. And, and I think there's a couple of different approaches. I think, Amit, you'll share some. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Um, so basically, when you're getting into the industry, you know, it's, it's natural for your parents to sometimes think, what are you doing? Like, you know, is, are you serious about this? Because ultimately, they want, in their mind, what's best for us. But I think we need to give them a bit of reassurance as well, that look, we are taking it serious. And one way to do that is to maybe put a goal and say, look, mum, dad, whoever it is, give me two years. Give me two years to try to get to this level. And if I hit that level, let me keep going, right? Because then they know that you're holding yourself accountable. And also you're holding yourself accountable to yourself too. So you know yet yeah, you can't just, you know, dilly dally about you know take a few photos here and there because you know that that two-year deadline is creeping up every day so give yourself a deadline give, and tell your parents look if i don't if i'm not by this day not saying you're going to be shooting ad campaigns but if i'm not earning 500 pound a month or thousand pound a month by this stage 
then you then you can say, all right, you know what, you wasted your time, or you haven't you haven't hit your goals. But that will just push you so much harder. And I'll, sometimes that will, that's what we need because when we work for ourselves and being self-employed, it's so easy just to snooze that alarm clock, just to lie in or or not go to that exhibition or not do that research because who's going to tell us off? There's nobody looking over our shoulder, you know. But mm -hmm. once we know that okay, this is all or nothing. If I don't make it, then I, then I've got to stop what I love then it pushes you that bit further. And they know that, okay, if it doesn't work, you might try something else. So that's one way of doing this, giving that assurance to them that you are taking it seriously. And I, I mean, you've got, you've yeah. got a different view, well, a view on it as well. Well, I remember, Sam, so when, when we started, um, I had to convince my parents that, you know, there was, this was a viable career. You know, you can actually make money taking pictures. You, you can have a living. You can have a good life. And one of the ways I got around doing that was to actually send my parents some articles that I found online about photography okay. I actually cheated I, I, I typed in world's highest paid photographers right and I thought if I'm yeah. going to send them any article I'm going to send them this one right yeah. they were shocked they were like wow the, you know these guys get paid this much to take pictures and what was interesting I didn't just send you know I wasn't worried about sending them you know um, photographers from a certain ethnic background I just wanted them to show them that there was opportunity in photography full stop right and I think it's so hard from the outside. Even now, people are shocked. So when I tell them what we do, they're like, but yeah, what's your real job? I'm like, yeah. no, no, like, yeah, this, is, this yeah. is my real job. Like, you know, I've got house, mortgage, everything. That, that, and I'm like, that, that, actually, <laughs> that actually happened to me. We were in New York, in Manhattan. We had our exhibition there. Two floors mm -hmm. in Soho. So you can't really get bigger. So I'm speaking to this guy and he said, so you've done all this work. I'm talking for 10 minutes. And he said, so what do you actually do for work then? And I said, what? <laughs> this is what I do. What do you mean what I do for work? You know, it's just so people don't know. So a lot of the time it is up to us to educate people and say, you know, educate the parents. And even if, you know, there's a photographer that you know that maybe you can take out for coffee with your parents and he can talk to them or she can talk to them about what it's like in the industry. I think that could be a really way, just a great way to be assured. And, you know, Sam, you can even use other industries. You can even talk about chefs, for example. So everyone loves mm -hmm. to cook, but not everyone can make money. But then you've got your Jamie Olivers, you've got your Gordon Ramsay's. And these are kind of living, breathing examples that people have, have built really, really big careers that, that so many people just, you know, would, would be in awe of achieving even half of that. So I think the key, Sam, is, is education. You know, don't don't fight the parents. Just educate them and say, look, mom, dad, there's a whole nother world out there. And, you know, the brilliant thing is I'm all about selling the benefits. So I always tell my parents um, the beauty of our job is that we have a certain element of flexibility. Like we, we're not nine to fivers. You know, we can, we can take an afternoon off. We can go and see our parents. We can play in the park at certain times yeah. or whatever. And it's like... It's wonderful. I think so many people now, especially after lockdown, are reevaluating their career. They're like, I don't know if I want to be a nine to five. I don't know if I want to work in an office. And, and we're lucky that we're, we've kind of built this business that's not only a lifestyle business, but it's a business that you can actually build and grow and you, you get back exactly what you put in. But yeah, please feel free to, to, to share. And even if you wanted us to have a call with them. We'll do that for you, man. No problem at all. Uh, thank you, guys. Actually, well, that, that kind of leads into um, one of my other questions, actually. Um, so, like, one of my latest projects that I'm, that I'm kind of working on is um, a food zine. Uh, I want to kind of explore the idea of um, of British food, but then how it's been influenced within, um, within migrants and minorities. And then, obviously, like, being a chef myself and working in kitchens, it's something that I feel like I have an insight towards. But um, like initially, like I thought it was just an idea. Um, but I think I, doing my masters now, I've had the opportunity to kind of like turn it into a project. Um, but it's something that like the that I've struggled with in the past, like because I've always wanted to do like the the writing, the design, the photography myself. Like I think more to kind of prove a point and to kind of like in my head, like to show my parents, now nah, I can I can do this. I can be a creative. I don't, I don't need to necessarily have the the nine to five. But I think. By doing so, I've struggled with um, with um, seeing it through because I think it's been too much and it's been one of my shortcomings. So I was wondering, um, obviously, the two of you as a duo, it's all about like collaboration. And so I was wondering if we could get some some of your thoughts on the idea of collaborating and what you can do when you want to reach out to other to other photographers or other designers to try and get them involved in your projects. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, collaboration, I think, is what is something that's led to our success. And one issue, one of the biggest problems in the creative industry is ego, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, who gets the credit? 
but I did this. No, I did it. I want the credit. I want the credit. And it's amazing what you can achieve when you don't care who gets the credit, when you're just doing it for the, for the project, for, for the love of what you're doing. And so I think that nothing great is ever achieved alone. It just isn't. So you have to collaborate. It's not even an option. It's, it's a must. There's only so much you can do with one person. So mm -hmm. we even tell this to photographers who are starting out, find somebody to work with and collaborate with because you'll learn so much. And as you, you're, yourself, if you bring other people into the pod, you'll learn of each other. So 100% collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Because, and, and, but, but what I would say before you start the project, be very clear what each person's individual role is and where you see that the final outcome. See, what happens a lot of times with projects, and it's not a bad thing, I guess, but sometimes people start, but they don't, they don't actually know what they're starting and they don't know where their destination is. So okay. what's the end result for this? You know, where are we actually going with it? And that's where projects get lost because it's like, it's like if you don't have a business plan for business, the business isn't going to work. Same with the project. What's, what's, the, what's the blueprint? Who's going to do what and what in it? And if you can allocate everybody a task, if you can, you know, keep, if everyone can stay happy, everyone knows their own roles, and importantly, people aren't stepping on each other's feet, then I think collaboration totally works. It's when two people want to do the same thing is when you get the problem. So okay. when, when, I, when we work together, we've got very distinct individual roles, right? And that's allowed us to continue working together since 2003 because we both know what we're doing and we're not trying to do what the other person is doing. You know, we know our strengths. So he, he, he comes in from his side, I come in from my side, and together we're whole. And that's, that's the thing with collaboration. If you know that the people in the project that have got a, a, a strength that the other people don't, then that's going to work, you know? So it's about yeah. finding the right people, identifying what they're going to do, right? And then thinking, okay, is this the right team? Because guess what? Those two people might not work together because they both want to do the same thing. But if they're, if they're not, then, you know, if they don't want to do the same thing, then I think it could really work. I mean, it's always lovely saying we're home together. Sorry, I'm not touched by that. Well. <laughs> um, Sam, I completely feel your pain, you know, that thing of trying to do everything yourself and, you know, it not materialising. I've, I've been there many a time, but one of the things I, I realised a long time ago is look for people's strengths and let them play to it, right? So that's one thing we're, we're firm believers in. We always look for other people's strengths and give them the opportunity to play. Um, it's like a football team, you know? Not everyone is going to be the best defender or the best striker or the best to be bold. You've got to find the right people for the right job. I remember when we were shooting the Adidas campaign um, earlier in the year, there was a point I was shooting, I turned around and there's probably 40 or 50 people on set there. And it hit me right in the face. Even though I was there clicking at the time, the whole thing would have been impossible without all of those 40 or 50 people. And exactly. Each and every person in the room had, had an individual role, no matter how small, no matter how big it was, every single person had a strength. So I would encourage you, my friend, you, you sound so sharp, so, so hungry and so keen to get ahead. Look for people's strengths and let them play to it. And you know, people love teamwork. It's it's a family thing, you know. No one, you know, we were meant to be around each other. Things are so much more fun when you do them together. So if certain things you're doing at the moment aren't working, it's probably an indicator that that's not your strength. Find someone else who is maybe good at those and they can pick up the slack and together you can you can bring the project to life. Okay, cheers guys. Um then yeah, another one. Um Tanoop, you've mentioned like in the past um how you comfortable you are coming into a into a room or in, into a meeting and um i think in a previous interview you said like from from your school from your schooling like i'm um, being able to go to like um museums exhibitions and being around like this art world like when you got into when you started your business you felt comfortable being able to to, to speak um to people but like i feel like at times i have like this um what imposter syndrome I guess um, as a, and as a result I think it's hinged my creative process and um, again I'm just wondering what kind of advice you would have towards that for someone who kind of like is able to speak for uh, like on the business side or or know like what their rates what their fees can be that kind of thing it's interesting so the imposter syndrome is something definitely that you don't it's not something that you just feel yourself there's a lot of people i think who share similar feelings and and i think it's down to self-awareness all right so one things that people say about photography and, and the creative world is that you spend a lot of time alone you know you're, it's a very lonely business but i actually think the more time you spend alone the better because 
being self-aware and being aware of who you are is so important. So now a lot of times we're by ourselves, but we're distracted by our phones, by TV, by social media, and we never really get to know who we are, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the minute you start to have a conversation with yourself, and I don't mean this in the kind of crazy world, but the minute you start to become comfortable in your own skin, in who you are, and you understand who you are, you will never feel like an imposter. Because what we do is a lot of time we go into places and we project our own insecurities, right, onto other people. So we'll think that, okay, my shoes might be dirty. People can look at my shoes and think I haven't got much money. No one's actually ever said that. You're thinking they think that, that, that about you, but no one's ever said that. So I think having that self-awareness and confidence that you are amazing as you are, that you're your own individual, that people will like and respect you for who you are, I think is really important. That's one thing that we've been able to do because we've worked so long by ourselves that we're so comfortable in our own skin. We've really got to know ourselves well. And it's interesting, you know, some people hate to be alone. I love to be alone because I respect my time. I respect my me time where I can really dig deep and understand, evaluate who I am as a man, where I'm going in my life, how I feel about myself. I think those kind of feelings will give you the confidence that when you go into any room, that you're totally comfortable being yourself. That, you know, you, you don't feel any insecurity. So I think that's an important thing, is just building up your own self-awareness as who you are as a man, personally. I mean, yeah, yourself. really, really valid points. So Sam, I, it sounds crazy, but I have, you know, I know so many people that approach me and say, Amit, the one thing you're good at is, is confidence, you're good at networking, you seem to just believe in yourself. Can you teach me that? Is, is the common thing I get, right? And I always wonder, what is it that I do? What is it that I've got that allows me to do, to do that and to navigate? And it sounds crazy, but I almost play scenarios out in my head before they've happened, and I, and I anticipate them. So when people have imposter syndrome, I think it's often because they're not prepared in a situation. So they'll go in somewhere, be caught off guard, and be like, oh, uh, I don't know. Whereas one of the things I try and do is I try and watch a lot of people. I try and understand a lot of people. And I think it builds up my level of intuition. So no matter what situation you're in, you just get comfortable at being quick on your feet. And I think that's the key. And I think the more you practice it, you'll get so good at it that people literally, you know, they won't even know that it's maybe your first time doing something or you're, you're not used to it. But if you project that level of confidence, people will believe in you. And I think that, you know, they say dogs can do it. Dogs can sniff when you're scared. You know, the dog will start barking if you're scared or, or act a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's just so important that you fundamentally believe in yourself. And I think, you know, it does involve a tiny bit of research sometimes. A tiny bit of preparation goes a really long way. And I think those people that don't prepare sometimes, they can get caught off guard. And I think then they sometimes do look like an imposter. Whereas if you put that bit of time in prepping, and even just, it sounds crazy, but just being nice and warm and open with people is such a simple thing. And I honestly think you can get the most out of a situation if you're just kind and if you just smile. If you smile, people smile back at you. And it sounds... Really? Are you think it? No, my man. You're smiling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if you do that, it's simple. And I think that, you know, everyone is willing to give you a chance, providing you believe in yourself, Sam. So just keep pushing forward, my man. Okay. Cheers, right. Um, and another question, again, that kind of follows on, I think, from what you were saying, um, but yeah. So like, through photography, obviously, you've been able to tell your own story and you, you, you've you built your own narrative um, as, as being Indian British men kind of thing. You haven't really, you haven't really sold, you haven't sold out or you, you stuck to your, your roots and your understandings, I think. But what advice would you give to someone who's kind of like struggling to find like, their their way in um, or trying to tell their narrative their story when especially like from what you see there's not really many people who you feel like are doing it how you want to do or doing it what you do and um, do you have any advice for, for that yeah. um from based on my own experience and i'll refer back to our, our seat project um the first thing that we did was have like almost like a mastermind session. So if you, if you think that, um, if you can gather a group of people who understand you and they don't have to be like you, but they understand your work and your background, they understand who you are, speak to them and just hash out some ideas and say, look, this is what I'm thinking of doing as a, a, for, a, for a narrative, for a project, for a piece of work. What do you think? And that's exactly what we did with our seat project. You know, we were speaking to our, our agents at the time about some ideas about doing projects based on our Indian culture. 
And we had loads of ideas, like doing something about businesses in South Hall, where we grew up in West London, where there's a lot of Indians. And it was only through a process of em elimination, discussion, research, talking, that we stumbled upon, not stumbled, we came upon the idea of, of the seat project being a good a good kind of project. So it was very timely at the time, a lot of people had long beers. So sometimes you just have to go through the process and try different things. Even do, um, uh, try to, you know, um, do projects about you know your 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 background your your story and just show people get feedback because you it's unlikely you're going to get the the perfect project straight away and it, it can be a process of trying different things getting feedback tweaking it try again going back showing people and I think through that kind of feedback you can you know really discover a really good project that resonates with a lot of people on the flip side of it you should do you know, what you feel you're comfortable doing, telling a story that you want to tell. You know, there's no right or wrong in the creative industry, in photography and film. Let's express who you want to be and never fear that people aren't going to get it because you're telling your story. And ultimately, what do you want to get out of it? Do you want to get, you know, uh, have international exhibitions or do you just want to document a certain part of your history or your culture or who you are? So the end goal is also important, like what you're trying to achieve with it. So never fear it, just try it, because ultimately what's the worst that's going to happen, you know? But that would be my kind of advice. Yeah, I mean, a, a really wise point. So I think, um, I think a lot of us put other people on a pedestal sometimes, and it almost puts an element of fear in us that, you know, we can't do this, we can't do that. And we're firm believers in, in testing and evolving. I think when you test and when you evolve, and like Nuruk said, when you get feedback from other people, it gives you an idea of of yourself that you maybe haven't considered. And I think that that's one of the, the, the best parts of this industry is having so many people that are genuinely interested in, in what you want to do. Um, but no, I would, I would encourage you to, to trust your gut as well, Sam. I think deep down inside your heart, you know, you know where you want to be and you, you, you have an idea of projects you may want to do there's probably an element of fear or an element of procrastination that's maybe holding you back so i would definitely think about you know collaborating again and just getting feedback from other people we had no idea when our when our turbans and tails project started that it would be so big you know but evolution is a wonderful thing and i think again tie it back to teamwork as well when you when you work with other people and you have support from other people and when you get feedback from other people it gives you an element of validation right and then you kind of know okay this has got legs people are actually interested in this but at the same time don't be too swayed by what other people want i would say <laughs> believe in, and trust in your gut and be be authentic you know like there's something wonderful about, about being authentic and being different i think when we were young, we were scared to be different. Now, the older we get, everyone wants to be a bit more different and a bit more unique. So, so, so go out there and do your thing, and just just don't be scared about it. I think I think fear is is the biggest problem in the world. You know, fear yeah. and self doubt they can literally hinder your career. So and you can do a lot of research. So like, much. I, I learned so much about the the identity, the Sikh identity, via doing doing our project. You know, okay. about, about the turban, about the different styles of turban, the history of the turban. And that's only through doing the project that I learned more and more about it. And then ultimately wrote a book about it. You know, but we, I never started off with that knowledge. It just came, it was, it was just an idea of let's take some, take some cool photos of men in, the, in their turbans and beards. And it ultimately evolved to a book. And ha did we have that idea in the beginning? No way. We wanted to produce 10 images for our website. And it went on to be, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. 72 portraits, international exhibitions, a book. So there is that evolution um, that, that comes along with it, but we had to put the work in and have to kind of understand and, and, and you kind of find your feet sometimes as you're going through it. So there's no kind of one answer, but I think there's different things you can do. And hopefully some of what we uh, told you today will help. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I've got one, one, one more question. Um, okay. So the, like, what, I'd say what we see is like the resurgence of grime. And so it's been, um, it's brought forth like obviously like, like black and brown um, cultures to, to the mainstream. And I personally, I feel like it's become heavily like commodified and like individuals and brands have kind of latched onto this concept of like what we, what we see is like urban kind of thing. And in which I, I don't, I don't really believe in because then I feel like you're then dictated to fit this norm or such stereotype. And I'm just wondering from, from starting out, did you ever feel like you had to fit this stereotype as like, urban or being urban photographers or having to just do like urban like 
landscape kind of things and if so if that's changed over time yeah when we started out we were we were called the urban the urban duo like we literally <laughs> just did, did urban music you were two brown guys and we shot mostly black uh, artists and um, <laughs> uh, and it was interesting because at that time it was very niche right because because hip-hop and grime and, and even any kind of black dance music wasn't a big thing. So we would mm -hmm. have this great book body of work, but it was just urban. Urban, and, yeah. And we used to show it to people and they used to say, well, like, this is just urban street stuff. But the photography was good. Interestingly now, if we had said those images now, they would be so commercial. Because mm -hmm. now, that urban street that's stuff, it, guess yeah. what? That's on billboards everywhere. That's mm -hmm. the stuff that people want. That's the real life stuff. That, that's the market now that these brands want to target to. So the industry yeah. is totally shifted to when we used to get pushed aside because oh, that's, a bit too, that's a bit too street. And guess what? We had to claw our way in, into the industry to get that first commission that wasn't urban, where someone trusted us enough to shoot someone who wasn't, you know, of, of colour, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, then it was just men mainly we were shooting. And, and then from men, we had to start to shoot women. And it was just a, such a slow process. But, but now, that would have been so cool. You know, for someone with that book, would have been, would have been highly commercial. So the industry has shifted. But, you know, but so is business and so is everything. Like, you know, that culture is totally what brands want to be associated with. And you're right, it has, you know, there, there has been, you know, they have kind of lapsed onto it, like you said, and, and made it this kind of cool thing. But, you know, is that a bad thing? I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's a bad thing. If anything, it gives people a little bit, a bit more chance to get into the industry because then the street is your playground and you can shoot sure, cool sure, on the yeah. street, you know. Uh, we recently did a shoot, um, this in West London on the, uh, on the street, like a test shoot, and it, it took us right back to where we started and we love the images. Totally love it because that's what that's what we started off with. If anything, it was yeah, it was yeah. a better share because it was away from that kind of high production, forty people on set to me and Amit, you know, with a couple of assistants, a couple of lights, light packs running around shooting, and it was great. So the industry has shifted, but I don't know if it shifted in a bad way. If anything, I think it's it's probably better now because we would have definitely got further faster if, if the industry was mm -hmm. like it now. I mean, no, I agree. In, in many ways, we were, you could say, we we're ahead of the time. We were ahead of the time. Trends. <laughs> um, um, <Trend> but, <laughs> um, but no, listen, it, it's an interesting thing. You know, I used to wonder, did, did we used to get commissioned to do the urban music artists because we looked slightly urban, you know, and did commissioners think that, you know, we'll get on better with the artists? Yeah, you know, yeah. maybe then someone who's yeah. twice our age, maybe a, a lighter shade than us. Yeah. Who knows? But, you know, I believe, you know, one of the best parts of being a photographer and director is you just develop this knack to navigate across cultures. And I really don't believe that the best person to shoot an urban artist is someone who looks urban. I, I completely disagree with that. I think that, um, I think that photography teaches you that you can deal with so many different people from so many different backgrounds. People would be shocked if they knew that I spend many, pre-COVID, I spend many of my weekends with Grannies in Windsor, 70 plus, sat with our dogs, <laughs> sipping tea on a Sunday afternoon. Yet here's a man that, that shoots hip hop artists, you know, starting out, you know, in music studios full of smoke like it's Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. And yeah. it's just a different, it's a different world, right? But one of the, the beauties of being a photographer is that you will definitely develop that knack of dealing with different people from different backgrounds. And I honestly think it's probably one of the, the biggest gifts this industry has given us is that ability to just navigate you know and i would encourage you to even if you feel you're not the right fit for something get involved in it don't think to yourself well people like me don't shoot that type of it's, stuff it's, so i should do that it's a, it's a better time now yeah. than it was when we started because when we started we were totally against norm people did not understand what we were about like two brown boys one minute why are you working as a duo because you're splitting your feet in half Right, why that's, that's silly. And then mm -hmm. Amit and Naru, people couldn't even say my name, Nahu, Napu. <laughs> like they just they didn't get it, right? Naru, all right, uh, a lot of the time. And they just they just don't understand it. But now, guess what? It's a cool thing to be different, you know, and to produce this work like that. So now is the best time. But the thing that I would say is more important is is as a photographer, how do you navigate through this content rich age where everyone is posting out images? and everyone's doing great work. 
Like, how do you get yourself seen? I think is the more, most important question. And that ultimately, you know, a lot of it comes down to who you are as individuals. How do you brand yourselves? Because that's one thing that you can really make yourself different is, okay, you know, you're Sam. I mean, Luke, how do we make ourselves stand out from everybody else? And that's where a lot of focus has to go as well, is the branding. Why should I get this guy on set? Why is he or this girl on set? Why, why is this photographer the right person for the job? You know, so I think that's mm -hmm. the question we need to be asking ourselves a lot more is, is, is how do we get ourselves as individuals seen, you know, on top of the work? And, you know, yeah. to add to that, I always use the aeroplane test, you know, would someone want to sit next to me on a flight for eight hours is, is the million dollar question. If the answer is okay, yes, yeah. there's a very yeah. good chance that you guys could work together. If the answer is no, then it, it's it maybe it says something so and i always believe that people commission people and i'll i'll hammer this a million times for two reasons likability and delivery i think those are the, the two most important things right so you've got such a nice charming personality about you if you develop your career uh, and your work if you put the two together honestly you will you will fly but it all comes down to self-belief again sam and we're, we're just lucky there's been two of us so we always pick each other up, you know, no matter what. Don't let this facade fool you. We get days, man, where it's like, it's tough. We're like, damn, man, we've been hustling. Like, you know, we were so close to this job. Someone else has got it. But or, I, or when there's a lot of workload. Yeah, or when there's so much workload. And we're like, how the hell are we going to get all of this done? Why can't agencies kindly give us a bit more notice? Why does everything need to get done yesterday? But we look at it as a game and as an adventure and... We're just privileged that mm. we get to spend our days doing something we love and, and making a really nice living. And opportunities like this is hopefully to inspire other people to say, look, you know, we've been doing this for, for 15 years. If us two can do it, you guys can do it. And the, the difference is you guys have got so much more information at your fingertips than we had. Um, so you've actually got so many more opportunities. It's so much more digital now. There's a lot more content being created now than there was 15 years ago. So... You should be excited, my friend. Really, really excited. The future is bright, and um, we're just privileged to be in this. But if you need any help at all, Sam, even after this, we're yeah. here for you, my Mental man. Mentorship's a massive key. You know, we wish we had someone who could have mentored us, and that it wasn't it wasn't about them. So, again, like I've said that to you on the phone when I spoke to you, Sam. Yeah. Like we're here to help, even after this conversation. Feel free. Oh, thank I you, guys. Yeah. When I started, I don't know. Mentors. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even know what a mentor <laughs> was when I started, man. <laughs> Oh, okay. uh, thank you so Have much, guys. Um, I think no, I think that you pretty much covered like Amazing, the though. basis of it. Yeah, but um, th thank you once again. Thank you again for this opportunity. This, is, this has been great, and um, I look forward to watching the rest throughout the week. Yeah, man, just keep hustling, keep working hard. Nothing replaces hard work, man. Hard work, mm -hmm. belief, determination, and it's never it's never a process of um, like you never go from here to here. It doesn't happen. It's, it's literally step, step by step, step by step, step. And I think once you appreciate and kind of love that journey, right, is, is, is when that real happiness and, 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 and their fulfillment comes into play. Because it is, it is, it is, the, the media you know, paints this picture that you can kind of go from here to here so quick, but it is not. It's about just loving the work, loving the hustle, you know, enjoy, we love the chase, yeah, enjoying we? the chase, enjoying the progress. Um, and just, you know, each each day, you know, just, just being grateful that we're able to do what we, we love to do. And just being, especially with this, with the pandemic, this really mm. being to the idea that, you know, we're just in a privileged position to be able to do what we love. And, you know, not, not, no one tells us that you're, not, you're fired or you're whatever, you know, you can keep hustling and keep working towards it. So just keep at it, man. Keep at it. And we're here for you if you need any help. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Cheers, man. guys. Thank right. you so much, Sam. This has been awesome. Yeah, and for those who are viewing, next one's tomorrow, one o'clock. Please tune in again, and hopefully we can share some more useful information. Take care, man. <laughs>